Hello guys and very welcome to this video. Today I will try to show you the difference with tracking versus no tracking. So what I have done here is that we now had a perfect day with blue sky and a complete tracking day here. And yesterday I had a complete static day. So what I did then was that I parked my solar panels facing to the south the whole day and we had the same circumstances yesterday as the day today. The same temperatures and a clear blue sky the whole day. I will give you the numbers in the end of this video, but first I will just show you how I have built everything, because I have done everything here by myself, but not the electronics of course, I have bought the trackers and the linear actuators. So let's take a look at it. So first of all, I will try to not cast any shadow on the panels, because that will affect the whole system here. And well, you can actually see that we already have a shadow up there, uh, coming from this tree here. And that will affect everything, because all of those panels are hooked up in a series. So uh, if those trackers not are synced up together, there will not be any power at all almost. I mean, uh, I think only 150 to 200 watts or something. So that's crazy bad. Okay, sorry to interrupt, but it's future me here. I thought that you might want to see this when it's tracking, or at least when it's moving. Now it's in the middle of the day, and it is also another day when I am not measuring the kilowatt hours uh, when they are standing still versus when they are tracking. So now I can go to the panels and just let it do its tracking, or at least I can make it go from end to end because I don't have any time lapse here. And I, uh, well, if you want me to do any time lapse when it's tracking from, from the morning to the evening, I will do that if you guys give me, let's say, 20 comments that you want to see that. Then I do it for you guys. But now let's go over to the panels and uh, let's move it. So here you can see that it is searching for the sun. And now it will wait for 300 seconds. And then it will check the numbers up here again. So uh, now I will just turn it off. If you haven't seen my earlier video, uh, do that because uh, I will give a link down in the description. And uh, then you can see when I am doing all the settings to this controller here. But now when I have stopped it by pressing the set button here, I can manually track it to the east and I can manually track it to the west. Like so. And then we have those plus buttons. Now it will go all the way back to east without holding it. And of course the same to the west. So that's really great. Because then you don't have to stand here and wait for the trackers to go all the way to its end. So that's nice. But now I will take it all the way to east. Like so. So now I just will activate it, so it will travel all the way from east position to the west position. Okay, okay, <laughs> I will adjust the angle. So to adjust that angle, I have to loosen this bolt, of course. And now I simply just can adjust the angle.
And now when it's set, you can see that I actually need to drill a new hole here because it don't line up at all anymore. Great, now it's secured again. Okay, let's go back to yesterday. Let's take a look on the metalwork on the back side here. So I simply just have welded those iron bars together and shaped this tracker device, as you can see here. So I have some extra legs here just so it can stand there in high winds and normally when we are expecting high winds i set them to the neutral position and i also raise them up so they looks like a kind of mushroom or something but i only do that when we are expecting really high winds normally they just have to stand here and where i live it's pretty well protected because the wind normally comes from that direction and you can see that we have a lot of trees and we also have a big mountain there so I'm pretty protected here let's take a look at the rear one so here you can see the framework I put some hour in it not so much it was pretty fun actually and there is the actuator And uh, yeah, you can see that I have the same support legs on this one as I had on the front one. But this is much higher, so it needs a little longer legs, of course. And you can see that the pipe here is uh, thicker than on the other one here, because this one is telescopic. So I can raise this up a little higher, so it will be much easier to do work on it when it is <laughs> a little lower than it is right now so you can see that I have a locking bolt there so I just pump it up with my jack and then just lock it in place with that bolt there and then I have this bar here and I have three holes in this one so I can set it for winter spring and summer that's pretty nice but nowadays <laughs> I am a little lazy so they just have to stand there in the spring position but it's not so much of a difference there. And the panels, they are rated to 21.6 volts open circuit, and that will be a little over 200 volts into my inverter that I now have in my basement here. Earlier, I had that in my carport behind me here. But now, it's much more protected from the elements in my basement. We are going to take a look at that too, because that's pretty new. However, Six panels on each stand here. So, as I said, around 200 volts into my inverter. So let's go down in the basement and take a look at the inverter I am using for this system. And you guys who has been following me now for a while know that I have my Sulax down here in my basement, but now it's got company from a grow watt. So it's a pretty small inverter because the system is rated to uh, 1.9 kvp and uh, this inverter here can handle up to 3 kilowatt. So there we have it, one grow watt, 3 kilowatt inverter and then my old good Sulax hybrid inverter on 15 kilowatt. But this one is only grid tied. So I only selling that power out to the grid, but I can also adjust my consumption here. So if I like to charge my battery, I can do that just importing a little bit from the grid. And then I actually take that power that this one send to the grid into my battery instead. But I normally don't bother to do that settings just to get that extra kilowatt into my battery. This Sulax inverter has plenty of power anyway, so it will easily charge my battery if there is sun outside. But now, 
Shall we take a look at the numbers? Yes, of course we should do that. And I guess that you guys already have skipped everything just to this section here. So let's go out in the garden and take the numbers in front of the trackers. And let's see how many kilowatt hours a tracking system produces versus a no tracking system. Here we go, guys. So when the trackers are parked and the sky is blue and in the middle of summer, we only have around two weeks to midsummer. Well, then my system produces 11.9 kilowatt hour without any tracking. And with the tracking, the system produces 15.4 kilowatt hours. So that's again around 29.4%. So that's pretty good. And I think that I can gain one to maybe one and a half kilowatt hours more there if I remove those trees there. Because the sun is hitting the treetops and there is the sun right now. So maybe next summer I will take down those trees. Not for the extra kilowatt hours just, but just because I want the sun there. So let's take a look at the graphs. You can see that we have a pretty normal curve here when the panels are standing still. And then we have the tracking curve and you can see that it's a really nice flat curve the whole day. And you can see what I mean if you look at the end of the curve here. Uh, when the panels are standing still, we don't actually lose so much. But we, if you take a look at the tracking curve, well, I think that at least one to one and a half kilowatt hours is missing here due to those trees behind the house here. So there you have the numbers and what this will give in percent as it is right now is 29.4% more than just having them standing still facing to the south. So there we have it. Thank you so much guys for watching. Give me a thumbs up and please hit that subscribe button down below there if you haven't done that already. 2,000 people have pushed that button. Why don't you do that too? If so, thank you so much. It really means much to me. Bye.